All right. We finished off our GIF. We posted to Canvas along with our storyboard sketch. Next, we need the next component, which is a refined storyboard. One that basically takes all of our animation frames, chooses the nine best frames to tell the story, puts them into a clean grid layout. So here's the best way to do that. You open up your stage, the one that has millions of colors, not the 256 colors. Just because you might as well use the highest resolution you can, right? Highest quality. Then we go to the top layer. Don't mess with your timeline. Just go to the top layer and don't turn it on. Just click on it to select it. And now we're going to go to the window options. And notice that I only have 19 layers, but I have 54 frames. That's because of the repeats I did and playing it backwards and adding frames. So now I'm going to say not make frames from layers. That's how we got our layers into the timeline in the first place. But now it's going to be flatten frames into layers. So this, this is not optional. This is the refined storyboard that's part of the assignment. So this is after you've saved your animation and after you've saved your stage file. Now we're using our stage file to get a flip book of finished frames as individual layers. I did that after the last video ended, so now I'm putting it into the video. So now you'll see that these layers are actually called frame, and they're numbered between frame 1, which occurs after my last layer. That's why I selected the last layer, so it pasted on top of it. So all I need are frames 1 to 54, and I can delete everything that's not a frame. So I go to my layers. I go all the way down to the background, even the locked background, and I delete. Yes. So now all I have are the frames. Lo and behold, my animation will still play as usual. Right? But at this point, I am going to select all of my timeline frames and drag them to the trash. By holding, clicking the first one, scrolling to the last one and holding down shift and clicking the last one. And that's how you could set timing on all of them as well. So click the first one, scroll to the end while holding down shift, click the last one and it will select them all. Now I'm done with the timeline. As long as I don't have frames in there, it can't mess with my layers anymore. So I, I go to window and I turn off the timeline. So I have now a, a stack of 54 frames. Each of them are 100% opaque and exactly framed like they are in the animation. And they're not a GIF, so they're at full resolution or full color. They're all 8 by 8 inches, and you can check that at this point. If you need to change it, it's a good point to change it. 8 by 8 inches at 100 pixels per inch. Okay, now... I need to look at my rough storyboard and get a sense of what that middle frame might be. And so in my middle frame, he's starting to suck everything in. It's right after he was thinking about um, eating it and it kind of fakes you out a little bit. So it's like right there and then right there, starts sucking it in. And maybe that's going to be the frame. That might be my middle. You can always change it later, but I want you to mark your middle frame with orange. Because I have to choose nine frames out of these 54. Then I need to, that's like taking your flip book, turning it into a deck of cards. They're all stacked in the middle of a table. We need a table now to spread them out on. So this is where we're using Photoshop as a layout tool which we need to do to make things print ready, and this is a good introduction to it. So how do you print an animation? You print clean frames in a sequence that shows the transformation that you designed. You're not gonna show all 54 of them. That would be like looking at a, a film strip, right? Instead, you're gonna choose the moments. So we need a table. So what we do is we put our guides around our image 
using the move tool in our rulers. If your rulers aren't there to pull guides from, you need to hit Command R, or you can find it under Window and Show. Now I'm going to go to Canvas Size. And I'm going to make the background around this. You'll remember this because it's the largest size for a printing press. It's 30 inches by 40 inches. 30 inches wide, 40 inches tall. Grow from the center. The one thing you need to know about laying things out in Photoshop, because its measurements and its guides and things are, are pretty fussy, is that the only thing it can do perfectly is grow from the center. So when I grow from the center and I hit Command-0, this is what I get. Now I want to go, it's like a checkered tablecloth that I'm playing these cards on. The checkered tablecloth can be distracting, so I'm going to add a layer at the bottom, move it down to the very bottom, and I'm going to fill that, edit, fill with white. This is the only way. Some students choose to use something else other than white, and you can too, especially if you have white as predominantly the color of your, <laughs> of your frames. But as long as you fill it with a solid color, you'll be able to see your guides clearly. Now here's the next step for lay, laying out. We go to Window, and this is the first time we're doing this, and we're going to show, actually not Window, I'm sorry, View. We're going to show our grid. And the shortcut for this is Command Apostrophe. Now, if you set it up to be 8 inches by 8 inches, then your grid is going to show you inches. And it's going to be even on the grid, like we perfectly mapped this out on graph paper. If you're not 8 inches by 8 inches, if you're like 8.4 inches, then it's not going to be so nicely easy to measure. Okay? You go to View, Show, Grid, and the shortcut for that is Command Apostrophe. To toggle it on and off just like the shortcut for our guides is command semicolon so they're right next to each other okay now for this proportion we want a gutter or you can think of it as a border all around each of our frames that is one inch so that is four of these quarter inch grid squares to the the bold line so i bring my guides down the guides will snap to the grid and i Pull them one inch from each side of my center frame. And I might choose a different layer for that center frame. I just need one right now. Right now, all of them are stacked in the middle. Then I can turn off the grid, Command apostrophe. And lo and behold, I now, like training to be a professional card dealer, have segments locked that are perfectly spaced to deal out my nine panels. So what's the first one I want? I want to establish the setting. But in order to see it, I need to turn off my last frame. So maybe it's easy with my middle frame. So there's my establishing frame. I use the Move tool. I want to have Auto Select Layer turned off. And I just move it into place. Okay. Maybe I do my last frame. Which ones are safe? This is my character leaving. Even if we set it to reset, we don't want our last frame to be the same as our first frame. That's just kind of wasting the viewer's time. Yep, you're choosing the nine that tell the story the best. So I'm going to use this one, which shows my creature just kind of leaving. I have to select it and then move it down and it snaps in. I could also choose this one. Yeah, maybe that one's better. And then just turn this one off. But I'm dealing them from that center deck and keeping them very organized in the layout. Are you taking these from the actual frame? From the... I'm taking it from my stage file. Yep. And I'm actually, I have 54 because these are the actual ones that I, that, that I used in the animation, not just the layers that I built for the stage. Not that I know of. There likely is, but not that I know of. All right. 
That's a good thing to just Google because you might find that. It would probably be under view, but it might be under layer. But basically, it's the timeline is the thing that helps. Uh, one shortcut is to like put things in groups and then just turn off the, the group. Okay, now the hard one is going to be the vomiting it all back up. And so I might even decide I don't want to have him, I don't want to waste a frame at the end with him leaving. I want to use more of these vomiting ones. Okay, so I'm going to turn off my middle frame and I'm going to start building it now from here. So my creature appears. So maybe this is a good one for that. Next, my creature turns to start eating the tree. This is a good one for that. Next, he's about to eat the tree. That's the good one for this. Okay, so you're just asking yourself, does each frame in my refined storyboard give the audience, give the viewer something new to look at? And it might not seem like a big jump from here to here, right? But it's setting up the climax, which is that everything starts getting sucked in. And then this is a really dramatic frame. And so you can avoid kind of your, your messier frames. Because I might want one more. Maybe like that down here. And now I need that frame of him just being still and on his own. And then... He starts vomiting it all back up. I think I need to go back to this one for it. <laughs> yeah. So the really weird kind of rainbow vomit, that will tell the story the best at the end. All right. So those are the nine frames from my 54 that tell this story. Make some sense? Your animation has to be at least nine frames, right, in order for this to work. And as long as it showcases an animation, you're good. Once you're, you've done that, now you're going to say file. I haven't, I'm not going to erase any layers. So this has the potential to tell the story in multiple ways. But I'm going to say file save as. I do not want to overwrite my stage file. And this will be the third kind of Photoshop file we save for this assignment. And this is going to be the refined storyboard. So that saves it as a PSD. Now you want to save it, file, save as, a JPEG. Now you might be thinking, when we save things as a JPEG, we're usually saving them uh, 8 by 10 at 300 or 350 pixels per inch, right? So let me show you. This is where understanding resolution comes in. So if we go to image, image size, and we uncheck resample, so the computer does not change our pixels, but we can change our physical expression of those pixels through our physical format. Instead of 30 inches, let's make it 8 inches. And look, it's 8 by 10.6 by 375. This is a very good size for printing in an 8 by 10 frame. Because this is 8, the mat's actually 7.5, that gives us 
kind of even 